Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. So even in spite of all the effort that I put into explaining some very basic concepts, I still get comments like this from whoever this guy here is. Uh, let's just see here. Busy Beaver. Okay. So <coughs> he says, <clears throat> how is this expression then broken up into 1 over 2 times square root x plus q of xmn? So there are thousands of videos there are even links in the comment section. You, you, you need to read these links inside here. You need to study these links. Okay, see, these links aren't here just because I, I love putting them there. They're there for a reason. Okay, they're there for you to study them. <coughs> Excuse me. So if he had studied these uh, links, he would have known why. He would have had some of the answers to his question here. So he says, but this seems quite similar to the limit definition. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. How many times have I gotten that from fools in the mainstream? It has nothing to do with the limit definition. In fact, the limit definition is wrong. And I give you six simple reasons. I don't know if it's in this file here or somewhere else, but I'll do it again in the detail section. This is what I refer to as the detail section, okay? So I'll put in this section <clears throat> a link to why your mainstream calculus is flawed. Six simple reasons. <clears throat> and I'll explain to you why um, Newton and Leibniz and all the others who came before me didn't understand calculus, okay? They had no clue why it works. So if Berkeley knew about the holy grail of calculus, he would have had a, a good argument. I see Professor... Norman Weilberger as a kind of modern Berkeley. He has objections, but he doesn't know how to. He doesn't know why, 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 for example, there is no such thing as a real number. Okay, but I explain what a number is, and I explain why there isn't such a thing as a real number. But all Hillberger can do, all uh, Wilberger can do is what Berkeley did, which was to say that it's not true. Well, <clears throat> what you're looking at there is a very simple identity, which comes from the uh, Holy Grail, the geometric theorem, which I prove in this link here. Let's just see if it's still there. Yeah, okay. So what they've done here is they've disabled the links, so you can't go to the link from here. But if you look at the detail section, I actually talk about the historic geometric theorem. And if there's anything you can't find, you can always come to academia here, type it in, or go to my profile page, look under my profile and scan through my, so let me show you. So you go to my profile section, okay, which is this, you click on here and you click on my profile, or in this case, I don't know what it will say if it's you, but you'll click on profile and all the articles and books and everything I've written is here. So you can scroll all the way down to the bottom if you want. It doesn't take too long. <clears throat> Once you're right at the bottom, you can press Control F like that, and you can say Geometric Theorem, okay, like that. Oops, just misspelt it, like that. So, of course, obviously, I'm not seeing it right there because they're not all there yet, right? So, let's just scroll down to the bottom quickly. Bear with me. Hmm. I took a slug of my coffee. Help me <clears throat> with my wheezing lungs and to wake up. So you'll find lots of interesting articles here. Much better than any publication, any book you've ever read. <clears throat> okay. So go all the way down to the bottom. Pay careful attention to this. It's very easy. All I'm doing is I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll to the bottom. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and you can even save this page so that you can only do it once, right? You can save it as a single web page and only do it once and then just pull it up. And anytime you want to go to the, the article, and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so I'm right at the end now, right? So if I go back here again, there you go. So, um, so here it is. So here's my historic geometric theorem for dummies, right? Now, to save this, and then of course you can click on this, opening link to new tab, and over there you'll see 
it explains everything to you. Okay. And there's more than just that, by the way, there's, uh, you know, I mean, there's another, there's another link to that as well. Let's go to it. Uh, uh, where is it? It's called my historic. Yeah. This one here is the important one, by the way, my historic geometric theorem of January, 2020. That's where you get the Holy Grail from. Okay. So now what was I going to do? Oh, that's right. I was going to show you how to save this as a single page. Let, let me delete the previous one. So this was a previous one. I'll come back here now and I'll say, Hmm, save page. I suppose now, where is it? Yeah. I remember doing it now. I don't do this very often. It just goes to show you, uh, golly. Save as, there you go, right in front of me. Um, the noise you're hearing outside are the garbage collectors. So you can just say whatever you want to call it. I just call it John Gabriel Academia like that as a web page, single file. I put it in my downloads. Okay. And I say save. And so it's there and I can just close. Right. And so when I go to that over there, I can just say, open it like that. Okay. And there it all is without me having to scroll down with my mouse all the way down to that. So you're going to have to do this because <clears throat> I have a lot of material. I mean, I have over 250 papers, one book, seven videos. It takes a long time to search through here, but using the control F uh, feature, you can actually go to links that are no longer functional. And I, I, the guy at academia who I was consulting with or, asking why these links are broken, told me that it's a security feature that is because of a security concern that they disabled URLs in PDFs, which is a shame because they're very useful and it's nice not to have to go through all the nonsense that I just showed you right now. Okay. But it's worth it by the way. So anyway, coming back to this now. So Berkeley knew there were problems. He just didn't know why. Hmm. Similarly, Norman Weilberger knows that there are issues with mainstream mathematics, but he doesn't have, he doesn't know why, and he doesn't have the answers. I have the answers. The Holy Grail of calculus tells you why you're not doing anything with limits in calculus. So you may ask why. Okay, I'm about to explain to you. You see, this f of x plus h minus f of x over h is the slope of a non-parallel secant line, this red one, anchored at this green point. Okay, that's what it is. It's a, it's a slope expressed as rise over run, not angle. Okay, it's not expressed as angle. It's expressed as rise over run. Then f prime of x is the slope of this green line, or the derivative as it is called again, as rise over run. And Q of XH is just the difference in these two rise over run slopes. That's all it is. Okay. So why did I write Q of XH? Because uh, any of the slope expression must have at least one factor of H or more. And it may have factors of X. Okay. And it can have also many factors of X, but how do you know that the expression is a slope difference? You know because every term in it contains a factor of h. Okay, that's how you know. And so, and you'll know that the ones that do not have h are the derivative, which is this. Okay, that's how simple it is. So, so in in your calculus, <laughs> uh, your mainstream calculus, when you say something like uh, let me just get a pen here slightly. Okay. So if you have the function F of X is equal to X squared and you go through all the motions and whatever you end up with something like this limit as H approaches zero of two X plus H and that's equal to two X. And you're saying you're, you have a limiting process. You don't, this is nonsense. You don't have that. You just basically what you're doing is you're just discarding the difference h is the slope difference so if you have a parabola like that and you have a point of tangency there like that and a secant line 
then h is different in slope between this red line and this green line okay it's just a difference in slopes you're just disregarding it it's equivalent by the way this whole idea here is equivalent to setting h equal to zero it's exactly the same thing and and, and guess what there's nothing wrong with it there never was it's just that mainstream academics never understood calculus or why it works hmm so yes, you can just ignore all the terms in H. What it means is you can ignore the expression Q of XH, which you can always find, by the way, and it's not hard to find. Some, some cases require more ingenuity, but they're all doable. And <clears throat> this is useless in your mainstream calculus. Why is it useless? Because it's not like the auxiliary equation in the new calculus from which I got the idea, which is Q of X M N, which is always zero. Okay. And why is this always zero? Because in the new calculus, you don't deal with, uh, non-parallel secants. They're all parallel. Okay. All the secant lines in the new calculus are parallel to the tangent line, meaning the difference between the slope of any one of these lines and the tangent is zero. Okay. So there, there's no such thing as limit bullshit in calculus. It never, it never, it never had a place. It doesn't have a place. And th from this uh, one identity that I give you here, I show you how you can get both the derivative, okay, and I give you the geometric, uh, the geometric representation, and also the algebraic, and I show you also how you can get the definite integral, okay. It's ingenious. Because why? Because I am a genius, all right? And it takes extraordinary intellectual ability to realize these things. So it's not that I'm not, I'm not boasting. I could boast if I wanted to, but I'm not. It's just because these things really, even though I was the first to realize them, they've always been around. Hmm. Okay, so... Um, the first thing you need to do before you ask questions is you need to study the articles, the, the links that I put in the detail section. Now, remember I told you this here is the detail section. So I'll put some links in my detail section here, and you need, here's one to the Holy Grail. Okay, Let's see, did I put the geometric uh, theorem in here? Okay, so the geometric theorem is not in here, but you could access it from the Holy Grail because supposedly the link worked in the past, but I'll put a link to the to the article on the geometric theorem, which is this guy here. Okay, you know, the one, uh, the geometric theorem of January 2022, this one. So I'll place a link to that as well. Okay, so you can study it. And also six simple reasons. Uh, six, let's just see here, six. Uh, so this is why your mainstream calculus is flawed. And I'll place a link to that as well. All right. And uh, this article is going to be non-comprehensible to those who haven't actually done mainstream calculus. It's quite advanced in the concepts. So you first need to know what all these things mean. But you don't really need to study this. It's basically just telling you that the mainstream formulation of calculus is a whole load of crap. Okay. And that it never was rigorous until I came along, of course, and revealed the brilliance and the beauty of the the holy grail of calculus so this file is not hard to understand by the way this article here it's easy it's all high school mathematics what are you panicking about just because you write f prime of x like that do you have anxiety i could have written it as any any in any other form i wanted to as a matter of fact your mainstream uh, mathematicians the morons who teach you math would have probably written it like let me show you how. Uh, let's just get new here. Don't save. They probably would have said something like, get a bigger one. They would have said something like this, f of x plus h minus f of x over h is equal to f of x plus q of x h. Okay, so I could call it, remember, we because we put a prime in any uh, representation it doesn't mean anything special it just it's still a, just the name of the function i mean 
the only reason why we write fx and then it's derivative with f of x because it's just simpler to write this than it is to say okay write fx and it's derivative as f deriv x okay this is the same as this it's just a function and why why did your mainstream math academics not realize because they never understood that you can't use this relationship here unless both f capital and f uh, small letter are related as the primitive and the derivative and that they're both smooth not just continuous as you see on that bullshit site wikipedia and other sites okay it has to be smooth for this condition to hold right you cannot uh, use calculus here's another interesting fact for you by the way the methods of calculus are null and void unless you're dealing with a function that is smooth over a given interval. Okay, so if you've got a function like this and then suddenly you got this, you cannot use uh, the calculus method on this interval because this part here is not smooth. Okay, you'd have to break it up continuously. All these into smooth sections. So calculus is null and void unless you have smooth function okay smooth function i shouldn't have done that <clears throat> but smooth function very well then i've been going as fast as i can um, so that's the holy grail and that's how you can understand the holy grail of calculus and then of course once you've understood this you can progress onto the real calculus which is the new calculus which is 100 percent rigorous okay and that's a lot more advanced than this but it's still doable. It's still high school mathematics. You just have to persist, okay? There is no uh, limit theory, infinity, or infinitesimal bullshit in sound mathematics. That's all the garbage that comes out of syphilitic brains like George Cantor, the German Jew who <clears throat> developed set theory, and the idiots that followed, Zermelo, Zermelo and Frankel and David Hilbert and all those morons, okay? And they created a big pile of shit for you called Modern Foundations of Mathematics. And uh, your professors keep pulling the wool over your eyes about that, telling you that that's a, it's not the foundations. The foundations are Euclid's elements, and there are no axioms in Euclid's elements. Everything is derivable from scratch. Okay, so without rambling on more, check the detail section in summary, all right? And unless you've done that, if you ask me a question which is invalid, meaning that you haven't, that you could have known the answer if you read in the detail section, I'm just going to delete your comment and I'm going to block you, okay? So you need to wake up. I don't have patience for stupid people. You need to study the links in the detail section. If you want to learn from me, that's how you do it. I don't have time to sit here and repeat and rehash and I hate repetition and go over things over and over again when you could get off your behind and study the articles and that's what you need to do and if you're still stuck after that then I'll help you and I'll help you not once not twice not thrice but I'll help you a thousand times to understand if you're sincere okay if you're not I'll just boot you off the uh, channel and you won't be able to comment again and I'll have nothing more to do with you very well I am the great John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. If you're not a rare subscriber, become one. Tell your friends about the channel. Follow me on Academia. And until next time, goodbye.